Welcome back to Ill Eagle Culture Brands Modcast Talk. I am your host, John Ostos, aka Ill Eagle CEO. And as per usual, I got my counterpart, Dion. Two cups, yep. Larry. Yep. Two cups. <laughs> two I cups is. is I think that's the nickname. Today, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was one two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And we're starting out with a banger. Yeah. Um, we also have um, Mark Grothy, who's who's sort of a, I guess you can say a, a local bodybuilding um, legend, living legend. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know if that. What's your nickname, Mark? I know you got one, right? Jurassic Mark. Jurassic Mark. That's Jurassic what it was. Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Jurassic Mark, aka uh, Mark Grothy, um, and Grothy's here just to kind of talk um, industry with us, man. He's he's a renowned bodybuilder in our region. You've been competing since you were how old? I did my first show in eighty nine. Eighty nine. So he's been here. I was nine years old in eighty nine. I wasn't alive. I'm old too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dion's the pup here. We got the eras in here right now. This is yeah, be yeah. a good one. This will be a good one, um, especially because we haven't really dove in to talk a lot of bodybuilding and, and culture and stuff. So um, we'll get into a lot of that, man, and, okay. and just kind of talk about um, who you are, what you've done in the circuits. Um, I know you've gone, done everything from competing to judging um, and, and on a national level on, on both parts, right? Correct. You, you've competed and judged nationally. So cool. This is going to be awesome. We're, we're glad to have you here, Mark, and we glad appreciate you wanting to come on. Uh, this all started because you were listening to our podcast and you had touched base with me and just said, hey, I'm really enjoying this. Good job. And then I said, hey, we should bring you on. Yeah. <laughs> really mess with them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do, man. We're going to just talk a little bit of everything and, and see where this takes us. There's no real agenda. As per usual, we like to kind of freestyle everything that we do and, and make it as natural as possible so um if you need anything from us in the process just let us know all right um otherwise let's let's jump into it man let's let's first talk a little bit about your uh, bodybuilding career you started at age 24 24 okay I, I was into weight training and stuff in high school in fact one of my football coaches is the one that initially got me into it and took me down to the old ymca on broadway or not why not up on broadway but down on the i guess the downtown Y. Downtown. okay yeah. And kind of felt I had an affinity to lifting weights and kind of took it from there. Yeah. So there's there's a um, a common thing we're seeing already. High school coaches are getting younger dudes in the bodybuilding mm-hmm. in, the, in the high school arena. Same story kind of like Cody had. Yeah. Yeah. Tony yeah. Wilson was a big influence. And it's funny because my stepfather was also a, he was a 4 a.m. at the YMCA downtown guy. Okay. And the crew back down and the janitors would let him in him and his crew and they'd be down there training. So they didn't have 24 hour access back in the day. So you had to know somebody Nice. and they took me down there and dark dungeon. I don't know if you, this was 83. You're talking about the downtown Y that's the still there right y now. Right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was practically dirt floors. <laughs> oh, wow. That's what it seemed like. And I remember seeing some local high school kids I knew there and they were benching like 315 and three plates. And it was the first time they'd done it. In fact, Mark Rodacker and Barry Versdahl, two guys that went on to do good things in the area. Okay. And I was just like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so I kind of got the bug and just trained like a normal high school kid would. And it wasn't until I was 24 that I decided to do my first show and had no idea. No idea what I was doing. Did you have a coach at this point then? Did you hire a coach or how did you prep We didn't your... have coaches. We okay. had, hey, when's the new muscle and fitness coming up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. And here's a new bicep program. That ain't going to work. <laughs> so how did how did you get into like cutting and, and learn or doing all that prepping for the show? Did you just kind of read out the magazines too for that? Well, one of the guys, I was training at the sports center Okay. back in the day. This is, we've all heard of it, you know. <laughs> it's why, it's why Metroflex yeah. exists, man. Right, right. Yep. And one of the guys that was there, he'd done a couple of bodybuilding contests and he said, Hey, you should do this. I went, well, why not? I didn't know anything. It was like, just cut, uh, eat clean, eat chicken and tuna and rice. And I didn't know, I didn't even know macros. Yeah. yeah. And it showed I was 154 pounds soaking wet with a brick in my pocket <laughs> thinking I was just junior Arnold, you know? <laughs> and then it was, there was no, there were no coaches. You know, we kind of just kept training the way we normally trained. Yeah. We just didn't have it. And we're looking at, again, waiting for that next magazine to come out. When, when would you say coaches kind of came into the, the picture as far as bodybuilding and prepping stuff goes? I mean, around here, about the same time that the internet, when Al Gore invented the internet, that's when yeah. it happened. Yeah. Al Gore, sure, he invented it. <laughs> 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 I love that story. And I just remember mm-hmm. finding this is probably uh, 1990. 
mid nineties. Yeah. And actually my first coach that I ever hired, this is fun. It's kind of funny. I was living and moved to Phoenix. I'd been a bartender up here, blah, blah, blah. And had the opportunity to move to Phoenix. And I was going to get into personal training and thought this is going to be great. Well, I'm down there and I'm training at Beauvais and all these great gyms. And I was working for a company called American bodybuilding products oh, and nice. going on filling vending machines and taking care of them at their, at their uh, gyms and supplying their product. So I got to train in all these cool gyms and I was down there and this gal that I ran into and her name was Susan and if Rank, Rick Langraff, if you're listening, you'll have stories about her, <laughs> but she had, Oh, I know Rick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know Rick. Yeah, I know Rick. <laughs> the diesel. Yeah. Diesel. Well, um, she was from Ohio and she had done nationals and she was connected. Like she's, she's on the phone like, Hey, Phil Hernan, you know, da, 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 I'm training this guy. You, you remember Phil Hernan? Mm-mm. Oh my God, I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to keep up. So <laughs> okay. again, this is the eighties and she just, she actually kind of took me under her wing and she was scary. I'm not going to say her last name cause she would kill me, <laughs> but she taught me about cycle carving and basically chicken and broccoli. And then we add in whatever, but it was the first I learned of it. And she had, she goes, go buy this book, Sliced, by, oh, who was, I can't remember the authors, but Negrita Jade was one of them. And it was one of the best, that was an eye-opener for me. It was the first book I saw that spelled out the competition diet. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And it was, to this day, a person can follow that one and get shredded, which is wow. pretty cool. So, so the, the science hasn't really changed much it since, hasn't, since it's then. Yeah, get, yeah. They give it different names. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, all oh, my new training method. Well, Every training method that we've had that we have out here now has already been done. Yeah, right, they just right. repackage it. Sure, like Dion's. His, I think his favorite is, is the if it fits your macros or something. Yeah, like that, right? I just eat yeah. pizzas yeah. as much as I can. That's like an inside joke. Just one slice. Yeah, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just if don't you don't cut, cut it, it yeah, <laughs> it's one slice. I put it in Tupperware and it's prepped. Yeah, <laughs> right. Multiple yeah. a day, so yeah. it's cool. It works. But there, we didn't have the. Uh, resources that we have now right and right. you know kids can't get online and go to chat rooms the first chat room i ever saw or forum was i think the uh, website was get big.com okay. and it was like okay this is the one it's self-explanatory big. right there big. <laughs> and it was an american bodybuildings um web page so they were pushing their products but it was actually pretty good i got to meet a lot of cool people that would give more advice but it wasn't really the uh, end all, it just right, got right. more and more progressive and more yeah. hardcore after that. And again, you didn't have, you know, before that it was simply the, uh, on waiting for that muscle and fitness, muscular development, yeah. muscle mag. Yeah. Waiting on the edge for that. It's, um, so, so, I mean, you showed us downstairs what you look like for your first show. Um, obviously you came in, you did, had pretty solid conditioning for being a first time goal. Yeah. So, um, I mean, so you're saying you didn't have a coach that time. I had a guy that was doing a show at the same time, and I was kind of following what he him. did, but it was no explanation. It's you like, really just ate less. Yeah, ate yeah. less. And it's like, eat fruits and vegetables, and here, here's, eat baby food. It's got to be good. Shit, it's nowadays, good they, nowadays they don't even say eat fruits. I know. <laughs> fruits are dangerous <laughs> yeah. now in our press room. Yeah. <laughs> you mean I can go to Orange Julius four times a week? What the yeah, hell? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that would be ideal. Yeah, we'd yeah. see a lot more bodybuilders again, that's for sure. It, it's just, it just changed. Yeah, oh, and, for sure. You know, I was doing all my training up in, in Fargo and not getting a chance to see people and seeing what, the, what what it was really like. So I would then, I began making pilgrimages to the cities. And after I got my ass whooped the first time I went down there, it's like, I'm going to be around these people yeah, you know, yeah. and then get some input. And it's always a matter of finding a guy that A, will talk to you and give you some advice. And as a young... I guess I would give advice to the younger lifters. If someone's in your gym and you want to look like him someday, don't be a cocky dick. Yeah. Be humble and approach that person and say, Hey, you know, do you have any tips? Yeah. And emulate what they do. Not everything. Cause sometimes even those old dogs do some stupid shit, yeah, right? Right. but you know, think for yourself, be, you know, outside the box thinking. Yeah. And, just because you you see some on TikTok or Reels doesn't mean it's going to work. Yeah. I mean, you, you think of guys like how Cody said in, in his uh, podcast episode that, like, he didn't know much about what he was doing. He just did it, you know? Like, 
he didn't know anything about the gear. He just did it. Yeah. He, he didn't know much about the food or, or he just did it, you know, and yeah. it, it worked. Yeah. Not everybody has to go through that. Right, you don't right, have to right. go through it to understand what it is. You could just yeah. learn from somebody else. Like they'll teach you. They, yeah. they, they don't want you to make that mistake, you know. Sure. So it's important for people to realize that we don't all have to make these these things you don't got to learn the yeah. hard way yeah exactly right. yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's but not take, take advice with a grain of salt too i always exactly. say because mm-hmm. like you said some people you know everyone does something stupid yeah and, and everyone has this this tendency to say hey i do it it'll be fine for you and it's yeah. just like that might not always be the case yeah. especially when you're talking things around nutrition everyone you know, responds differently yeah. so yeah that's a big one that you see because this this industry like you said it's always evolving it's always changing yeah. uh there's there's always some kind of new approach coming um or or even just a new name for an mm-hmm. old approach or whatever you want to call it that you're seeing and someone's just trying to take ownership and that's how people are making a name for themselves in today's social media realms you know they're pretending they created this new system or this new you know program or whatever it may be and all they did was just revise something that's been going on forever there's yeah. really not much new you can come up with right. that's not going to be some kind of a scientific machine of some mm-hmm. sort that you know what i mean so yeah they, but so i, I was going to say in regards to that though with the whole social media thing like forums used to be really huge back in the yes. day. Like that was the original social media. I, I'm like mm-hmm. for almost anything. I remember I, I used to do forums for hip hop. I used to do forums for bodybuilding. I used to go into forums for all kinds of crazy stuff. And those were like the. I don't know if you even are familiar with forums. Are well, I do know what they are. Okay, okay. And also, <laughs> like technically, Reddit is a forum. Like they have sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Similar yes, to that. I, I know right. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. And that that was where everyone got information from. Like I remember yeah. that in the beginning, you know, stages for bodybuilding was bodybuilding. Was you a, had to be on forums to get your information. Yep. There was like people knew each other by their handles. You know that now today some of them are famous today. Like who? Like Dante Trudell yep. is a well known guy that came from forum days. You know where he was always in forums. Everyone respected his information and now he's got a huge following on social media and he still delivers like quality information yeah dog yeah. crap yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, I no i want you to elaborate on that one i would love to hear that oh dante trudell and the dog yeah. crap training yeah. methods yeah, and yeah. stuff it's just <clears throat> he just branded it. it's a yeah. hardcore yep. deal and if everybody tra- trained like dante trudell a lot of people would be injured a lot yeah it's like trying to emulate um branch warren who's one of my personal favorites right 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 who can train like him Right. I mean, he should be broken in a thousand different pieces yeah, more than Johnny. he is. Yeah. <laughs> they train yep. together, though. So. Yep. 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 <laughs> but, yeah. Dog crap. And and then uh, John Meadows, Mountain Dog. Yeah. Rest in peace. Rest in yeah. peace. Yep. Rest in peace, yep. for sure. And they were influential and they were on the ground. Yeah. And they, they bought, stayed they stayed in the trenches. And, I yep. mean, still are, and, and so to speak. So, yeah. Yep. yeah. And stayed true to what the, who they are, yeah. which is really cool. Yep. So Dante Trudell now runs True Nutrition. Yep. Yeah, and he, he's always given a wealth of information on everything. He talks, you know, he's always talking to the youngsters about, you know, them taking cycles and not doing their blood work and all the different supplementation they should be taking alongside that stuff. Like, he just puts out a wealth of information. So for all you knuckleheads out there that are out there running shit and not really knowing what you're doing or taking, you know, sloppy advice and just filling yourself up with stuff at way too young of an age, the least you can do is find somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. And I recommend Dante Trudell on, on Instagram. He, yeah. he always puts out good quality information and, yeah. and talks a lot about what what's going on internally in the body and, you know, how you need the supplementation you need to help work mm-hmm. with the stuff that you're taking and yeah. the blood work that needs to get done and whatnot. And he has really dope training policies like yeah. you talk about. So, you know, you touched on that, you know, the younger kids wanted to jump into it and get the, uh, um, <clears throat> The instant gratification, right, that right, that they want, they want it now. That's a bad thing we're seeing right now. It's, too bad. it's, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's deadly. Definitely listen to guys like Dante Trudell when they're they're giving you the advice you need to hear. If you're going to do something, prepare yourself for it. Do your homework. Yes. Do your research. Consult a physician. Yes, yes, I agree. You know, just because I feel good doesn't mean you are good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True, heroin yeah. addicts feel good too, man. <laughs> <laughs> right up until that moment, <laughs> straight up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that's a good one because like we we've talked about this a lot, and I know it was something that we wanted to address with you was just kind of your your opinion and and you know help, helping create an understanding of what these young dudes are doing to themselves when they're jumping on all the kinds of nonsense. I mean, I know 18, 19 year old dudes that are running gear right now, taking tests and and train and doing all this different stuff, which. I mean, at that age, my opinion, they don't even need to touch none of that stuff. Right. Yeah. If I could say one word to sum it all up, patience. Absolutely. We all need more patience. For sure. Whether it's career-wise, 
It's great to be driven. Yeah. Driven, being driven is awesome. Yeah, being passionate is awesome. Mm-hmm. And what's the oh, imagining it? Uh, you, were, you were bagging on it a while back. One of the manifest. Yeah, yeah manifest. You can manifest it. That's great too, to yeah. an extent. Yeah. You know, but like my mom always said, wish in one hand and shit in the other, and see which one fills up first. Yep. That's true. I heard that a lot when I grew up too. <laughs> it's because people don't understand the concept of wishing isn't just sitting around talking to the end, right. to the wind, you know? Yep. Channel that passion, that desire, that dedication. There's yep. got to be purpose. That's yep. why I talk about that with passion all the time. Yep. You got It's one thing to be passionate, but are you purposely passionate? Like, yep. are, are, do you have a purpose behind that passion? You know, because like, I love tattoos. You know what I mean? That's a passion of mine. Mm-hmm. But to put purpose behind it, I became a tattoo artist. You know what I mean? Yep. Like they, people don't do that enough. People say, I'm so passionate about bodybuilding. I'm so passionate about yeah. the gym. Okay, cool. So what are you doing? Like, what's your purpose steps, in that round? What, what are the you steps know? to get Well, oh, I just take a bunch of gear. Yeah. Do you have, <laughs> do you have the patience to do it right? Right. Right. Do, to let things work out for you to, uh, um, utilize the knowledge that you get right. yeah. and apply it. And they don't these days. You, That's the problem. You know, again, jumping in with both feet into the water is great until you're way over your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then if you mess up your body using farm, um, PEDs and whatever it is, there's no turning back from that. Right. You know? And you got to realize it. And then why are you in it? Yeah. You know, some people hop on stuff just to. For a look. Yeah. To be the most jacked guy at the high school basketball game in the yeah. crowd. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's true. You're not competing. You don't have any real purpose behind it. You just want to look freaky. Yeah. So yeah. you're putting your 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 livelihood at risk. You know where are you going to be when when you're 57 years old like me? God, I, I said that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, so I'm glad you threw that out there, so I didn't have to ask. Just how old are you? Okay, but, 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 but look, initially I was like, hey. yeah. but uh, but uh, only because I want to point out, like, look at the guy. Yeah, he, you you obviously um you've got longevity, man, and that's not something that you see in bodybuilding from a lot of people is for them to be able to carry that. You know, I always I meet dudes in the gym all the time, old dudes, and they're just like. Yeah, back in my day, I used to be and used yeah. to this. And it's just like, I always say, you know, they always say, but now, you know, I'm too old. I'm just like, ah, look at this picture on the wall over here. This, this guy was 50 <laughs> years old in this picture. You know, like, I always bring that up because you're one of the dudes that, that you're living proof. It, it, if you quit, it quits. It yeah. quits. Yeah, it yeah. quits. But if you keep going, which you do, I mean, you're you're still powerlifting. Yeah. Um, you obviously still take care of your physique and keep that bodybuilder look like that's not easy to do for as long as you've done it for, but you still do it and you still carry yourself like that. So it's hats off to you for one. And, for and sure. then what, what goals to, to want to achieve, man, especially for guys like us who, you know, we love this shit and we're looking for role models and people to, to understand what the future holds for us. And clearly it can be possible. Mm-hmm. How many times do you hear bodybuilding is a lifestyle? Right. It really, it is. Yeah. Do you have to live it 24 seven? No. Do you have to like uh, apply yourself? Yes. You know, I could easily, I took 10 years off from the gym. Yeah. In 90, I did nationals in 99 or 98, Memorial weekend of 99. I was getting ready for the USA's. I was 254 pounds. How tall are you real quick too, before you go? I am five feet, six and a half. Five foot six at, at 200 and. I'm 230 now. I was two. Okay. F- and that Memorial weekend of 99. We we're on a big bike ride. Me and I'm going to throw some names out there. The Larkins. We we're all okay, on yeah, this yeah, ride. Yeah. You know? And we're out by, uh, oh, towards the, the lakes area. And on highway, this, anyway, where we were doesn't really matter. But we're on these twisty roads, and I'm not paying attention. <laughs> off, the, off the road I went, a big twist. And missed a sign by inches. Dang. Laid my bike down in the ditch. Luckily, it was a gradual ditch, and there was no trees. But ended up tearing the labrum in my shoulder. And then the next day I met the gal that I was going to end up marrying at some point. And it's like, didn't train for 10 years. And she'd ask me, she goes, why do you got to go to the gym all the time? Well, I'm pretty sure it wasn't my magnetic personality that first brought me. <laughs> <laughs> it was my boyish good looks. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I put, threw my bike in the ditch and tore my labrum. And I, after that, I just, I would try to come back to the gym and I just couldn't. I did. I took 10 years off and then finally it was October. No, it was black, huh, black Friday of 2010. I was like, I looked in the mirror and I said, I am sick of this. Yeah. And I said, I'm getting back at it. Five years later, I competed again. That's crazy. So 
not that I'm trying to put a put a hole in your story, but didn't you train at Sports Center in between that time before 2000? Very little. Okay, I just I, seen you there I at would, the right time. I so. would pop in, and it would be like people would expect me to be what I was, and it's like my head wasn't in it. Oh, uh, got you. Got you. Life got in the way. I had a, I had in my career, you know, and the priority wasn't there. And then I just. Uh, it, I just clicked one day and I would, I would find myself going to other gyms to train. So I didn't have to answer to people wondering, asking uh, what I was yeah. going to do. Okay. Like they were holding me to a standard that I wasn't ready to hold myself again. So I was gone. I'd, I'd pop in and out of the sports center and just, uh, for the most part, didn't do anything. Turned into your average <laughs> dad bod kind of guy. Yeah, like you, you lost all your, your, your didn't lose all of it, of but Oh, aren't you lifting anymore? Okay. Oh God, that stung. So you maybe got smaller. You just you just yeah. weren't as big or something. Yeah. Okay. And I, you know, my midsection grew, and okay. it, it's what happens. Yeah. And then, basically, I came back to being myself. It's like a part of me was. I was told this back. God, you just you were not yourself. And then I found myself again, and I found my found my church, which nice. is the iron. And that's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it. Uh, that's it, always grounded me and holds me personally accountable. And that's what I've always kind of just uh, been very grateful for the, the gyms, for people like you having, providing these facilities. Yeah. I've always wanted to own a gym, but I don't have the time. Sure. I don't have the, I don't have the desire at the, to really do that. So I'm really appreciative of the guys that can put together a good gym and provide a service for yeah. everybody else. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, one of the things for me is I don't think people understand how much a, a gym can actually mean to certain people. Like mm-hmm. you're somebody I get, like you say you found your church, you know, that's, that's it for you. Like that's the Holy grail. That's, that's what Mark thrives off of and feeds mm-hmm. off of. And it's very evident at, at your age and the quality of physique that you keep. So people, people think that gym going and bodybuilding and, and the love for the iron is just this like egotistical, like arrogant thing that. People, and, and and they're probably right in some sense. You know, yeah, there's okay. there's definitely dudes that do that. I'm not saying not, but it's I can't tell you how many people have come to me in my gym alone, and it's always older cats who are like, "Thank you for for this gym. You mm-hmm. don't understand what it's you know it's saved my life, or it brought me out of depression, or you know something. Just in in the seven years I've had the gym, I've had so many people tell me that the gym being there in existence saved their lives or brought them through a dark mm-hmm. you know stage in life or a divorce or anything crazy i've heard it all bro and and i in the beginning i used to be like what like that's yeah. you know it's it's a gym i guess you know cool like I, any gym could have done that for you but it's yeah. not the case it's not the case it's not the case it's some, for some people it's just the specific gym that does it for them you know like yeah. there's people who don't like metroflex and that's fine but then there's people who who worship the yep. ground at Metroflex, like that is their place. That is their home that, you know, they take Metroflex all over the world with them when they go, you know, and they, yep. they wear apparel and they take pictures and say, it's no Metroflex, but I'm here, you know, type of like people, there's people who truly, truly feel that way yeah. about it. And yeah. I think it's dope. I, I think it's something that people miss out and, and don't understand a lot. It's like, like you said, with the whole girlfriend thing and asking, why are you always in the gym and stuff like, yeah, there's, there's always multiple reasons, but most of it and most times when it's people who take it that serious, it's just fucking therapy, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. It, it's just therapy. It's the most unsafe, safe space, but sure, <laughs> right? Yeah. it can it, be, and it holds you accountable and the relationships that you can make in the gym. Some of my longest lifelong friends are people that I have trained in the with. gym. Yeah. You know, they've, they've seen you when you're bad. They've seen you when you're good. Yeah. They're there for you, and they'll probably always be there for you. Yeah, you know, you know I, I don't train at Metroflex very often. The only reason I don't, just so you all know, <laughs> I'm very much a I don't like leaving my space. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say you wanted to be the biggest guy in the gym. That would be the <laughs> <case> <laughs> mark anywhere. Yeah. I, think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you could come to Metroflex still. <laughs> so you know, Snap is doing very well for me right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, having some place very close and convenient because I don't like spending my time. I got my dogs. I got to take care of, and right, right. you know, and to travel all around town. I live way south, so if Metroflex was closer, closer, I'd be there. Yeah. But as far as the gyms, it's like whether it's anytime Snap Courts Plus. We're all at different levels. Yeah. And wherever you feel comfortable, yeah. you know, it's like some well, Metroflex is too hardcore for me. It might be. Maybe someday you'll grow into it. Yeah. 
you know, maybe someday you'll get too big at Planet Fitness and they'll kick you out and you got to go someplace better. Yeah. 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 Like, what was that band where they used to age out? Menudo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, oh, you're 15. Yep. You got to go. Yep. That's funny. It's an old school band. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you would know nothing about it. Yeah. Oh, you're 200 pounds. You can bench 225. You got to go. Yeah, you've graduated. You've gra- yeah. <laughs> it's like you a gym. need a free, free bar. You need to go over 65 pound dumbbells. You got to go. Sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, can go, you can go back to gym kindergarten. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. No, I, I love it. I think it's it's a it's a cool thing what the gym can be for people. And, mm-hmm. and for me, it's never been an issue of, of people who train or don't train at my gym. I appreciate the fact that they're just in the gym in general. And it right. doesn't only really matter what gym they train at. Um, I love when people love and appreciate right. the gym that I've created because I created it. It's, it's my space, you know, yep. but it's not for everybody. You know, when it's you told, not. you know, when Metroflex opened and stuff and I didn't know all the details. Right. And it, after I got to know you a bit and how it all, all evolved, you know, I had no idea that you laid that all out yourself. I'm like, well, Metroflex, it's a, they bought the franchise. So they came in and they mapped it out. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, nah, that's not the case. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> that's not the case. It, I had to beg for what little input I got. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> they're probably like going, okay, you're close. Mm-hmm. Wow. How did you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the hats off to you on that and oh, creating that. Thank you. Yeah. you know, it's because Fargo for the longest time. I mean, when I first got into the game, we had the sports center and that was low key at the time. Yeah. Then they had gold's gym which became all American athletic yep. Gold's gym was in the office space right next to all, right west of Olive Garden now. Yeah. It was like across from Target, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that gym. Yep. And they had a dungy area downstairs that was just nothing but old freaks. Yeah. And I, I say that with such respect. I mean, it was just amazing some of the people that trained down there. Yeah, yeah. There's an old an Italian attorney in town. He was a power lifter and he's he'd be down there dressed in black. He got more hair all over. His, he was just a hairy bear. And <clears throat> excuse me, I remember he would always be training in combat boots, squatting, deadlifting, yeah. and it was just just don't go bothering Rich. Just let, let him be, you know. <laughs> but he's the guy that knows everything. I want to talk to him. Yeah. Nope, not yet. <laughs> That's funny. I, I want to be that guy. <laughs> I'm still working on the back here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that part. I'm good. It, don't worry, it'll happen. Yeah, anyway. eventually. <laughs> One way or another. Stay natty as long as you yeah. can. Yeah. It'll come yeah. faster. <laughs> but the, the, we had the old broad. We had uh, the YMCA. Then they had Gold's Gym. And they had a place called um, Broadway Gym and Club Broadway, okay. which was basically in the old Broadway building. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. There's a lot of really um, badass bodybuilders there at that time. Craig Renshaw, Mark Rodacker, Rodacker, Glenn Kelsch, all went to all national level and just badasses. Yeah. And I remember seeing Wrench walking around for the first time wearing shorts and his, his quads just thundered. It's like, oh, oh God. God. And I was, hundred, like I said, 154 pounds going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't too long after that I got to know that crowd and I'm at a, they were having a barbecue in the summer and I'm over there. I'm eating chicken. And these guys are all drink eating steaks and beers and urban and, <laughs> and craig looks at me and he goes what are you dieting for a show yes <laughs> <It's> like, <"Shit." laughs> he goes and i was thinking i don't even look like i lift compared to these guys but it, it just woke you up yeah. and being cool to the 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 and they weren't that much young older than me but they were just cool to me yeah you know and it's just giving them respect and that's one thing i've found too is if you give someone respect they're more likely to respect you back yeah for sure you know i I was over, I train it, I go to Edge occasionally because it's right next to my house. I go to E-Hop and I'm at Edge. I kind of get that look, me and my training partner, Dan, and there was a kid there one day and he's looking at us and we were doing some back work and doing some um, stiff arm pull downs and we got done. We were doing something else and all of a sudden this kid's standing there and he's like got his hand in the air. He's I go, asking a question. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's raising his hand like he's asking the teacher. And I go, do you have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> oh, that's fucking good. And he goes, can I help you? And he goes, yeah, I just wanted to know, am I doing this right? And I watch him. I go, you're doing it great. And I go, but you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> that's fucking funny. <laughs> he was like, okay, that was, but I thought, wow, kids are raised right. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, yeah. At least to be respectful of it and not interrupt sure. what you're doing. You know, and he. 
Unlike Cody, did you see Cody's post the other day about the, with the dude that was just standing in front of him while he was on the Smith machine? No, oh just God. staring at him. And Cody, oh, yeah. Cody got a picture of him in the video that he was filming himself because this dude was asking him some questions and then just stood right in front of him <laughs> and stared at him while he was lifting, while he was squatting. Bro. That was funny. Yeah, I was like, oh man, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not cool. It's okay to it's, to creep from a distance a little bit, but yeah, yeah. don't get in there. He was. He said he watched him like the whole workout. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different topic, though. I yeah. think we're talking like G for P now, and then we'll just have to do another whole another modcast. He didn't get paid for that. I don't know. He's doing it wrong. Yeah. Is that still a thing? Like, is there, I, I mean, I couldn't confirm. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't confirm that for you, but is I, I don't know. Um, I know people whose inboxes get blown up. We could ask oh them God. and see what they think. Yeah, that's kind of funny because back in <laughs> comment the, down below. Oh yeah. <laughs> back when I when I was competing on the national level, and on these boards, these chat boards, you know, the guy's like, Hey, you know, are you looking for a sponsor? Da, da, da. And I'm like, no, not really. Like, <laughs> hey, I know this guy, he wants to pay, he'll pay bodybuilders and all this stuff didn't sponsor him and stuff. And he goes, give him a call. He can't get your number. He'll give you a call. And all of a sudden this guy's talking to me on the phone. He's going like, Hey, what are you wearing? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> shirt, pants, socks, <laughs> underwear, <laughs> snowmobile suit. Yeah. <laughs> Take your shirt off and pose in front of the mirror and tell me what you see. Click. Oh like, I'm, man, I'm out. You could have got a fat check though. Yeah, <laughs> he should have. He should have talked about the money first, and yeah. then and then it's you like, got to lead with the, this. This is the, really yeah. weird. I click. Okay, we're out. That's funny. But it was a whole. It was underground, but it was open. Yeah. You know, there's a, a guy that owns a in 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 uh, Venice near near Gold's Gym. There's a house down there on the beach, and it's always been chuck full of young male bodybuilders friend of mine from the cities that moved out there and he had moved out and actually Rick Langraff and I were out there in LA for his wedding or his honeymoon or whatever. <laughs> we were going to the USA's together and we walked by this house and I see my friend Tim who I competed against Tim, Tim who I'm not going to say his last name, but from the cities is living out there. And I look up and I see him in this house. I'm like, what the hell? He goes, Mark, come over here. I go over there and he goes, yeah, this is Ed's place. And this is where the NPC and everybody's going to hate me. Ed Connor. Oh, shit. From Gold's Gym. <laughs> yep. Come and get me. He has this house where he invites all these young guys this to stay. Good. He invites them to stay. Yeah. I never stayed there. Let's just say it was rather. I can either confirm nor deny, but it might have been a house of ill repute. Oh, uh, damn. And these guys are out there all out there sunbathing in their thongs. And it's like, oh, this is really weird. And. Rick can back me on this when he saw it. Yeah. He goes, yeah, he flies us out here and he lets us stay here for free. And we all train at Gold's. And it was, a, it was so the, the seedy underbelly has always been there. Yeah. But it was a little more unknown then. I think it's probably a little, if you ask around yeah. some of those guys that were on that scene, they'll tell you. That is funny. Yeah. So you didn't stay there. Crazy. I didn't <laughs> stay there. <laughs> Actually, I stayed in, in Venice at Tim's place. With his boyfriend one night. That was really weird. <laughs> and I'm nothing against those that have a different sexual preference than myself. Right, right. But I took the dresser and shoved it up against the door. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Tim. I didn't really do that. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. But he's, oh, he's, like, he's a good dude. Oh, yeah. But yeah. That's that's outrageous, though. I mean, you know that that was a thing. And it, it, it always still is. And it's it probably even is, worse yeah. now. Yeah. You know, now they're they're swooning people for Instagram and trips, you know, so they can make content and it, stuff. So you're seeing all kinds. Now you got people with OnlyFans. I see tons of yeah. even male competitors with OnlyFans. And it's like... Yeah. There's your sponsor right there. <laughs> they're just making it. They're repackaging it. Yeah. Just yeah. like it's the same protein powder, just a different label. Yeah. yeah. It's still gay for pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I promise it's not women flooding the dude's yeah. pages. You and know just what I so mean? you know, I'm still broke. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. One day you're going to see me just popping off. With, with Dion's going like to be trying nice cash on, the, on yeah. the podcast and shit. Hey, when did Dion get the Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just know, oh, just man. know. <laughs> Whatever it takes, dude. I yep. guess, man. I won't hate on your success. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's good stuff, though. So let, let's get in because you you probably have su such a, a a wealth of knowledge in, in the circuits, man. And and I want to talk about a lot of different things with you. Um, let's talk a little bit though about um, just kind of where bodybuilding is today. You know, like I know you're a uh, um, you've j done some judging, you yep. know, locally, nationally, stuff like that. You're you're a national judge. Um, what are some things that 
you're willing to divulge, you know, about the industry, about the scene and stuff that, that goes on that maybe not too many people are keen to, you know, like one thing that I'll just start lead with is what we see a lot. And we've talked about on the show a few times is bodybuilding's really dying in terms of actual competitive bodybuilders. Yeah. Um, compared to physique competitors, even classic coming in and, and still in the show. But then you got your bikini and your and your figure girls and all that stuff. But we just don't see enough bodybuilders stepping on stage anymore in these bodybuilding shows. What what is what are your what is your thoughts on that or what's your opinion on on why that's happening and what do you think about it? Well I think one is unless things have changed, getting your pro card in cla- in bodybuilding. Right is still the most difficult thing to do. Yeah, they give them, they practically, I'm not going to say they give them away, but they, they award more pro cards for all the rest of the classes. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you're basically turning, I don't have the exact number off the top of my head, but five or six, eight, under 10 pros in bodybuilding a year. And you'll turn in two shows, you can do that in other divisions. Right. I think the, we, the bodybuilding has gotten a bad rap as far as they assume that it's, blatant drug use that gets everybody there and they label that as like i'm not willing to do what they right, do right. to be a pro bodybuilder or to be a, yeah. bo- a bodybuilder bodybuilder do you think the 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 freakiness that they're looking for nowadays too maybe deters a lot of people like they're they're really going for the freaky big like monstrous guys like we're losing a lot of aesthetic flow in some of the bodybuilders that you're seeing today and they're just big blocky monstrous guys they are blocky monstrous guys yeah i think that might be part of it and People still want to be athletic because when right. you when you get that big, it's, yeah. you're not very athletic. Well, and right. you're talking you're shredded on stage too. Those people are 40, 50, 60 pounds heavier than that in the off season. Yeah, so it's yeah. like yeah, you're looking at um, health nightmares for sure. And, and and for some people, a ticking time bomb. And if you look at and take the gear out of it, mm. just carrying that much weight, yeah. how much put it, how much stress it puts on your heart. They talk about people that are obese. Well, you're you're gonna have to have a heart attack. You're pushing your, if you have your, your heart can only push so much. And if you're 300 pounds fat or 300 pounds muscle, you're still got to work that hard. Yeah. And you're probably putting your body under more stress. Yeah. Cause uh, that, that hypertension is much worse when yep. you're yep. muscle. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Um, the way the, everything has grown with the increasing classes, what I would like to see happen, I think hope for the future of it is if to meld, get rid of classic physique. Really? Get rid of the title, the, get past the name. And just merge them. Merge classic physique and I, bodybuilding. I love that idea. And become these monsters with tiny waists. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is like people are saying, and it's been a really big argument as of late, is they need to up the weight class for a classic because guys like Breon Ansley can't make that weight anymore. And he it's limiting him, but he can't be 212 at the same time. So it's like... Do they need to get rid of the weight limits then it would just be bodybuilding <laughs> right, right. but that's what i mean like so think about a six foot three guy yep. that has to compete in classic he's gonna be skinny yeah okay i guess my point is bring finding a way to get them the bodybuilders the massive bodybuilders with those weights wait charles griffin yeah right now right Maybe now right now looks, yes he has he has gone from this super blocky Symmetry, waist bro. he's brought it down oh, yeah. he has that to me is where it needs to be. You right. br- you're merging the two. He's looking really lean he at really, nine weeks Shout out to you, Charles. It's crazy. Yeah, always, Charles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, actually, I said that to him one day. I go, man, they just got to get rid of bodybuilding and, and merge it. And he looked at me like I was nuts. He goes, I think I didn't, I, what I said was, they just got to get rid of bodybuilding. <laughs> and he didn't let me finish. Yeah, I thought he was going to throw me through the wall. <laughs> Politely. He's like, bro, I got the tat and everything already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get rid of it. I don't yeah, know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> creating all the divisions and having that, I think if they were to really condense the two, like Seabum, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, imagine. That would be a beautiful classic look for everyone to achieve, yeah. Put, put him up a little, like Flex Wheeler, Kevin Lavroni, those, that yeah, era. Yeah. That is what bodybuilding is. So if we could aspire to have that as the role, we'd have it instead of, 
Branch Warren. That'd be crazy right, though. Right. A 70, 70 pound difference, like in physique, like from a three hundred pound bodybuilder to a two hundred and forty pound bodybuilder, sixty pounds. Well, I don't think those three hundred pound bodybuilders would make the cut anymore. I know that's what right. I'm saying. That's like a, that's a crazy change going right. from a big yeah. Rami to a, right, right, right to a Chris. But what could, I understand what could, that. What could yeah. Rami do to his body? To bring it down and have that. smaller quads. <laughs> you know, I'm all about the huge quads. Yeah, I love the freaky look. I yeah. just it's less attainable though. It is. You know, there's some Should, people just can't okay. get there without right. certain help. Should it be attainable for everybody? No, right? No, not absolutely not. That's that's kind of right. the thing. If you're looking for the ultimate physique, and now all of a sudden we're we're shrinking it down and creating classes of ultimate physiques. Right, right. It's like, hey, you know, if we break it down to it, if I'm a monster midget. Yeah, yeah. I'm the biggest midget out there. <laughs> I'm the biggest of all the midgets. Yeah. Have, I, have I ran that to death? But it's like I've just created my own class. Right, right. So, like a like a, a Lee Priest and, and yeah. Yeah, Flex and all them. Yeah. And there have been great smaller bodybuilders over the years. You got uh, Danny Padilla, Lee Priest, um, Franco Colombo. Yes. You know, he, he was, you know, for back in the day. Yep. You know, he was competing against Arnold. Yeah. And he wasn't getting blown away. Right. You know, Frank Zane and Arnold stood toe to toe. What do you think about like two twelve bodybuilding then? Because that's the thing. It's like well, two twelve. We're blurring is, the lines. Yeah. Is what's happening? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the conversation guys are bigger forever. than ever. Board yeah. short guys are bigger than ever. And, they just don't and, show their legs. Yeah, and I'm just like, and that's crazy. Why is that? Do they have? Let's see. There's a height limit. Yeah. Is there a weight limit? No. Nope. There you go. Yep. That's the weirdest thing, though. Like, why don't mm-hmm. they put a weight limit on there? Like, there's no reason for them to be that large. Yeah. Like, you're just asking for people to abuse other things. You know. Yeah. Food. Well, you're, you're, a, you're you have some knowledge around judging. How how does that play in in the judging? You know, like as far as when I say blurring the lines, like when these guys are that big, typically they weren't supposed to be. So guys that were winning before, like you know Jeremy Buendias and stuff like that, mm-hmm. they didn't have the mass that they have today when they're winning classic or when they're winning physique shows. What does judging say about that criteria that you're looking for? Well, with the criteria with it, and again, I've been out of the game for a couple of years now. Sure, it's. With um, men's physique, they didn't want you to have that bodybuilder look. You, did, you couldn't be striated. You had to be more relaxed. Right. Um, it's more presentation. More than presentation. Flexing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you would draw those lines. And here's where I kind of have the my other issues with it is at the um, local and re, and uh, less other the local and uh, state shows where they have cross all the crossover divisions. Yeah. When you got the same guy winning physique classic physique and yes. bodybuilding it's like no that weirds me out that weirds me out. that weirds me and out. you see it in women a lot too yeah oh i'm in figure and bikini pick one well yeah. i beat her in figure but she beat me in bikini yeah how it's stupid yeah <laughs> and it, 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 it's very difficult for the judges to try to judge that stuff because right. there's so many classes and it's become so blurred that you can't it's hard to really um critically Draw and accurately draw those lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got a good question that goes into that, like picking uh, what what you want to do as far as bikini or mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, do you like suggest because like younger people obviously want to compete? Mm-hmm. They lowered the limit to eighteen years old or, or up to, it. Yeah, they upped it to eighteen years old. Um, do you think that those people should compete? Like, obviously, I'll use myself as an example because I'm not the size of what a classic bodybuilder mm-hmm. would have to be. Would you suggest that those people continue to compete or compete for their first time, even though they don't fit into like a bodybuilding mold yet? Or would you say just wait until you're of size, basically? First thing I would say is if you haven't been to a show, go to a show. Yeah. Because right. there are way too many people that they decide they're going to do it, but they've never been to a show and they never. go there and they're completely it's like, wow, I never even should have been up there. Go to it and figure it out. As far as picking which one you want to do, Talk to somebody with a critical eye. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody. Like a, you saw my pictures from my first show. It's like, hey, you're you look good. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma must have thought you looked great. Way to go, <laughs> you know. But was I a bodybuilder then? I was a I was a fit dude. Sure. I wasn't a I didn't consider myself a bodybuilder. I, I know what you I haven't grown up into it yet. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm aspiring to be a bodybuilder. John and I argued about this earlier today. It wasn't an argument. It wasn't it was an argument. Discussion. No, it was, it was a fair discussion. It went okay. It went okay. Uh, it was just we were talking about uh, who's classified as a bodybuilder and who isn't, basically. And it was 
because I've heard it all. And, and, and even <laughs> I and, got and, the and, answer. <laughs> see, and even my coach personally, DeAndre Campbell, feels he feels a certain way. He he's he said it out loud before. I just strongly disagree because yeah. people say you're not a bodybuilder until you've stepped on stage and competed. I say you can't become a bodybuilder or you can't step on stage if you don't become a bodybuilder first. Okay. What's Mark's professional opinion? My professional opinion is a, if you have to tell somebody you're a bodybuilder, bingo, you're not, I agree with that. You wear it. Yeah. And if people come up to you and say, are you a bodybuilder? That's pretty good sign. You are. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Or else you just got really good genetics. Sure. Okay. So it's like, if like number one, if you have to tell somebody you're a bodybuilder, you're not some of the best physiques, I've ever seen have never stepped on stage. Right. Yeah. They'd be competitive bodybuilders if they did, though. They would be competitive bodybuilders. Right. Yes. You, I don't feel that you have to be a bodybuilder or you, you have, have to, to step be. on stage to be a bodybuilder. Correct. As long as you're living the life. As long as you're living the life. And yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so I, I, I stand still right. I mean, that's <laughs> that's fair, but the, we're talking about living a lifestyle. You're not just training. That's no, I what know. I was thinking but that's you what were I, saying. No, no, that, no. You know? I, I, then you're just a fitness yeah, enthusiast. Exactly. You and know we, what I mean? We talked about that. But if you're, that, if you're really was. doing the, the bodybuilding style, training, exactly. nutrition, and programming, and all that, and you're living that life, and, and you t- if you were to tell certain people, like, you know, well, yeah, I bodybuild, they'd be like, oh, where have you competed? And you're like, oh, no, I, I haven't competed. I'm yeah. just a bodybuilder. They'd be like, oh, you're not really a bodybuilder then. Exactly. And that, that to me, that, that's just somebody- like, well, I mean, logically, that doesn't even add up because you can't, like, that. think about the dudes, like, I, we see this all the time, who step on stage because they had a great weight loss, but they don't belong on that stage, but they competed. So that is makes that them a bodybuilder. To, yeah, no way. Fuck no. No way. <laughs> no. It's not a bodybuilder. This is not the biggest loser right, contest. Right, Hats off to you for your accomplishment. I commend it. Yeah, I commend it. But don't disrespect the people who put the work in to really stand exactly. on that stage. That's not right. It's a different type of feeling. Yeah. It, it literally is a whole different feeling from yeah. weight loss to And I know we're going to get shit for saying that out loud, and that's all right. That's I don't true. care. I, I, I don't care don't either care. Because, <laughs> because I strongly feel that way, man. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with your weight loss journey. That's fucking awesome. I, I commend yep. it. But there's some people that belong on stage and some that don't. You know what yep. I mean? And 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 in the same breath, a bodybuilder is a bodybuilder. A competitive bodybuilder is somebody who steps on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I just that was something we discussed earlier, and, we, yeah. and I've talked about with a lot of people. And I see people post that shit all the time and say, you "Stop saying you're a bodybuilder if you've never stepped on stage." And it's just like, oh god, like how do you step on stage if you don't become a bodybuilder right. first? Yeah. I'll throw a couple <laughs> names at you. Vic Richards. Do you remember him? Nope. 80s icon. He was from Nigeria. Okay. And he did one show. He turned pro by winning the Nigerian championships. Okay. So we won that. Yeah. I can't speak to the level of competition, but this guy was an icon around the magazines and stuff. And he was huge, huge. He did one show, turned pro. And at least he competed. Sure. You ever seen, you're familiar with the Barbarian Brothers? Peter yes. and David Paul, yep, yep. DC Cab, all those movies that they did. Yep, yep. Um, was it Babysitter or whatever it was? Are those bodybuilders? Hell yeah, they were. Hell, did they compete? Nope, Fuck no. Nope. That's but, true. But they wore fanny packs and all. <laughs> they did, and they dressed like in flannel and <laughs> yep. barbarian gear yeah. in the gym. They were definitely bodybuilders. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, do you have to compete to be a bodybuilder? No. So right. You have to com- to be. A, you would then be labeled a competitive bodybuilder. Right. But if you lift, just lift weights, you're not a bodybuilder. Lifting, well, if you're, yeah. is a power lifter a bodybuilder? No, no. Right. He, he just lift weights. Yeah. Right. So th- there's a lifestyle that you have to also adapt in, mm-hmm. I, to be considered a bodybuilder because it's a lifestyle, you mm-hmm. know? You don't necessarily have to compete, though. No. Cool. No, that's out the so. way, Mark. Mark. His, I'm, I'm his word th- is gold here, man. He's, I think that's fair. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I okay. agree with that cool. statement. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say anything different from that. I just think that, like, even though I competed my first time, I wouldn't have considered myself a bodybuilder. You oh, no, know? because you did classic physique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up. Okay. When, when you got a bikini girl and they write hashtag pro searching for that pro card and then hashtag bodybuilding. Yeah. You're not a bodybuilder. Oh, see? That's what I'm That's saying. That's different. 
<laughs> What's different? That's different. If they're hashtagging the bodybuilding, and then a, a physique guy can't be a bodybuilder if he's not a oh, leg trainer. Okay. <laughs> okay, right? But then I'm not a bodybuilder. Like I'm classic. Because you don't, trade, you don't, I train, don't legs. train legs. Yeah. No. So so but see the classic physique <laughs> okay. is is the original bodybuilder. That's what they're shooting for. Yeah. That's the they, 90s. They went after the Arnold look. So that yep. that was a, the epitome of bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're just trying to bring it back from the freak that they're 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 showing and looking for now in actual bodybuilding. So classic physique guys are bodybuilders. Builders. Yeah, they just named them something different because they wanted to bring it back as a different category. Yes, and but they, those are bodybuilders for yes. sure. I was just yeah. teasing you about that. So, uh, well, let's talk about this. So, okay. uh, so Jeremy isn't a bodybuilder. Then he's going to, to classic now. Jeremy, I think. Who? Jeremy Buendia. Oh, yeah. He uh, okay. was he. I guess he is a bodybuilder now. Currently, he's going to classic. Yeah, but you know what, Jeremy? <laughs> so he, <laughs> no. he, he trained legs. <laughs> yeah, he had he had a good set of legs, bro. Hey, I got you. Hold on. Go for it. He is a guy that took advantage of the class of the men's physique Bingo. to become category, a pro. To become a pro, he's always had a bodybuilder mentality. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And there, if you the bodybuilding is a mentality as well as anything else, it's I that agree. mindset. Yeah. So you can be a person growing into your physique and being having that bodybuilding mindset, but until you um, until you're stretching your tees and people are commenting on you, so. Are the people that are winning pro shows at the physique level or in physique, sorry, um, like high tier pro shows, are those people bodybuilders? This is going to get you guys. Uh, yeah, no, no, I know, I know right where you're going with it, too, <laughs> but because now you're talking about you're at a different level, though, too. But yep. so it's I guess it's it's hard to say. I make I make it uh, the statement jokingly yeah. because they don't train legs. They can't be <laughs> bodybuilders, but they actually live the fucking bodybuilder lifestyle yeah. without doubt. Um, but most of them train legs too. At that I would level. say a good majority of them do at that level, yeah. but I would also say most of them don't. Yeah. If you're going to speak in general from from the NPC to the to the IFBB, most physique guys don't train legs. That's, and if you fair. don't, you're not a bodybuilder. Right. If you do, fuck it, you're a bodybuilder. I'll tell any <laughs> men's physique guy to his face, he's not a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Though. He's I not guess. lying. He's not. Lying. You're not a bodybuilder. You're, you look great yeah. for what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, to kind of roll it over the other side, you got women's. Yeah, women's yeah. bodybuilding figure was brought in, or women's physique was brought in to replace women's bodybuilding. They were mm-hmm. basically the classic physique of men. Those are some blurred lines too. Yep. And they just, uh, would, you know, for a period of time there, there was no women's bodybuilding. They just like, oh, this is an abortion. We're just going to get rid of it. <laughs> so they put that aside, and women's physique became women's bodybuilding. And then they, and it was like, well, we don't want you getting too big, and we don't want this. But that even morphed to the girls winning the physique women's physique are getting bigger and bigger and more shredded, mm-hmm. more mannish. Yeah, I said it. Um, <laughs> and then figure followed suit. They started being the, the new physique. Bikini, fit. then it was, was it after fitness, bikini. I can't even keep them all straight anymore. Yeah. Wellness. I like wellness. Though. I like wellness. Too. I can't eat okay, on so that. If, just we, if, <laughs> if we compare wellness to men's physique and men's physique, like in your terms, they're bodybuilders. Is a wellness competitor a bodybuilder? Oh, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say you oh, yeah, did yeah. I'm, I'm aiming it at Home Slice over here. Um, <laughs> How is it different? Well, I think wellness would be bodybuilders. They would be. Eventually, but they don't. They don't necessarily desire. I don't know. I don't know. This. It's definitely a. It's um, so blurred. You can't. Yeah, even, it is kind of blurred. That's like to an extent. It's blurred to an extent. I think like all these other categories, it's hard to say they're bodybuilders per se. <clears throat> um, but they definitely live some sort of a bodybuilding. It lifestyle. all takes. It all takes dedication. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. And to different ex- different levels and extent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, and it sounds like I'm really bagging on men's right, physique right, no, but, and wellness, but I'm not. I respect yeah. all of them for doing but it. Speaking truth is speaking truth. Yeah. It, it, if I wasn't on a podcast, if I was face to face with a girl that her goal was to do a wellness thing, I'd encourage the hell out. Absolutely. Of her. Good for her. Yeah. yeah. Great. Same thing with the guy that's going to do classic physique. Yeah. Doesn't it doesn't matter or so? Keep yeah, yeah. 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 There's no, still that good. the whole board short thing has me just <laughs> wigged out. You know, I, I wouldn't do physique either, though. That's the thing. Like, uh, I, I I don't know if it's because of Eric because he like he won't instilled let that in my mind. <laughs> yeah, he won't let me. He'll stop coaching me if that's, if I do it. But I I wouldn't. I still I still wouldn't. So. I may have my opinion. But when it comes right down to it, just you be you. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Whoever that person is. And don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks, including right. us. Exactly. And don't care yeah. about my, it's like, yeah. what does that old fucker know anyways? Yeah. 57 years old and he's on 
he's got the afternoon free to do a podcast. Sure. <laughs> Why isn't he with his grandkids? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it, man. It's the truth. Like I, I have an opinion about a lot of things, but what the, the what the fuck does my opinion matter to you? Yeah, exactly. right. Like, don't yeah. worry about my opinion. Half the shit I'm, I have an opinion about. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just, it's just the way I view things. It's how I see it yeah. from my perspective. But mm-hmm. what do I know? You know, so. And I look at a fine line between advice and opinion. Yeah. I may have an opinion about something, but if you ask me advice, I'm going to give you a heartfelt response. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to think it through. I'm not Absolutely. just going to say. My, I have my opinions about men's physique. Yeah. But I'm not going to let my opinion blur it. It's, right. I'll give you the advice you want, that you want that you need yeah. to continue on. Kemper always told me it was he actually he would. When people want critiques, you want a critique from Mark, don't ask him unless you're prepared. Yeah. Don't expect him to sugarcoat it. Right. It's like, I'm going to let you know. It's like, ugh, I'd wait 10, 12 years, get a, <laughs> quit, do something else, start training this. <laughs> See, but Hell that's yeah. what you want in, in, in like judges' feedback, especially. Like, yeah. you want to hear the truth. I mean, because so many people are being lied to and told, you look really good. Like, and yeah, you might look really good, but compared to everybody else, you did. It, right, you right, know? Right. That's like, why. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. That's why when I was training at Fargo, I would go to Minneapolis to get to see what was out there. Yeah. You got to spread your wings a little bit. And again, yeah. we didn't have social media. We couldn't tell. Right. So you got to do that. Um, it's just come so far. Yeah. But it, it seems like, like the bodybuilding is slowly just dying, especially in our area. I mean, we're in... in in a small town, I yep. guess you would say. So it doesn't help because in the cities, when I go there, I'm like, there's, there's bodybuilding. It's there. You can feel it. It's not as big though. It isn't yeah. as big. Like I stated before, earlier today, it was when I went to the Minnesota for the first time, there were 200 competitors and there weren't crossover classes. Right. Yeah. Right. The only crossovers you might have a, a female bodybuilder and a male bodybuilder. And there'd be five couples and they would be technically crossovers, but the rest of them were, you know, we'd have full classes I think the smallest class I remember down there that first time was probably eight in the welterweights all the way up. Do you think there's a way that we can fix this or what, what do you think is like the best way to go about trying to grow this sport back up? I know like classic is obviously bringing a lot of attention to the sport yep. because younger people, but that's not necessarily the best thing when it comes to health. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, first off, if you're in bodybuilding or any of the men's categories for sure, or all of them, that health line is blurred. Yeah. Yeah. We're all, they're all taking risks and I'm not even talking about the, the uh, PED side of it, the nutrition side. Yeah. There's nothing more unhealthy than a person who's dieted down. Mm-hmm. Especially so, the bodybuilding process. Especially it's, the bodybuilding. It's bad. Yeah. I mean, you're dehydrating yourself to such an extent. I mean, like back in the eighties, uh, bodybuilders are dying from dehydration. Andres Moonsur for one, Mahab Beneziza for another one. They died at shows. Yeah. And this last year, I was looking it up because I was explaining to my girlfriend how like deadly these these past two years have been, and it it was about twenty professional uh, bodybuilders have died in the past year in twenty twenty one. COVID, yeah, oh for sure, it's definitely a big part of it. Vaccines more so than COVID, (laughs) yeah, yeah. I do believe that is a contributor for sure, absolutely. It's been proven at this point. We we got the data and the research for two years now, bro. It's proven. It's unfortunate. (laughs) I would kind of. I was kind of laughing one day. I heard some bodybuilding peeps of mine talking about, well, I'm not going to get the vaccine. I'm not putting that in my body. I'm going, dude. <laughs> <laughs> while, they're, while they're ramming some trend or something. <laughs> Tanya makes that in her bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> and you're cool uh, with that. Yeah. I don't trust these doctors, though. <laughs> <laughs> but Tanya, she's legit. She yeah. totally got it. <laughs> I seen her on the forums back in the day. I trust her. Her gear is dope. <laughs> God. It's true though. That's it that's actually a funny uh, contradiction because that's that's fucking. You true. hear that yeah. all the time. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, so getting back to the younger kids and stuff, if you're going to take that path, find a doctor that you can trust. Right, right. Get that blood work done and do your own damn research right, to the fullest sure. extent. Like find out what you're messing with. Don't just take someone's opinion about yeah. it. Um, but before you do all of that shit. Just don't. Yeah. Right, right. Give it time, man. You got everything you need genetically to, to really develop and build, and you're still growing at that age, you know, yep. 19, 20 years old. Like, give it time, like like you do, man. Like, we always say, I commend you because you don't even want to dabble with that shit. You want to see what you're capable of, and when you fucking tap out on all your natural capabilities, you'll be older, and you'll be able to determine where to go yep. from there. But in the meantime, like, you, like t- Mark says, 
Patience. Patience. Totally. Yeah. Patience. They got, a, they got a tattooed right here. It's like, yeah. you got to have it. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to go on a rant about that because obviously it's my age group. And I feel like if anyone's going to say anything, they should say it right now because we have so many people that are just fucking up. Like, not yeah. going to lie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's people that aren't going to ever compete. And they're, they're doing these things that are damaging their bodies that they know nothing about or they think they know something about. Right. And it's just completely destroying them. And they don't have any understanding of the ramifications they think they do. They don't think right. of the future. They don't think of 15 years from now when their wife wants to have a baby and it's going to yeah. take them a whole five years to get <laughs> a baby. A lot, man. Like, There's a lot. We need to understand as, as 18 through 23 year olds that like it's more than just now, more than just until you're 27. Like you see Chris Bumstead and you're like, oh, I want to be Chris Bumstead, Chris Bumstead's daddy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like. First off, stop idolizing a person so <laughs> right? hard. That's that's not a good thing. You don't want to do that. That's like what we do with celebrities nowadays, and it's it's getting sickening. That's wrong, too. It's, yeah. it's so bad. And it's pushing us to do things and not saying that Chris Bumstead is telling people to take PEDs or, or fall into this lifestyle that may not be healthy for everybody. Um, he, he sure does have a lot of motherfuckers out there with mustaches. Exactly. Though, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, like... I get he didn't it. invent the mustache, but every time no. I see a young cat with that mustache, I'm like, Chris Bumstead. Yeah, and then they got they got some sort of Chris Bumstead in their bio, like yeah, some yeah. something to commemorate him. Like, yeah, it's like, dude, come on, be. Why don't you try and be better than Chris Bumstead instead? If you're gonna do that, be yeah, better yeah. than him. Yeah. Be that. That should be your goal, aim not higher. be him. Yeah, aim yeah. Higher. and so, he, he's one of the rare ones. Yeah, that yeah. Has, is establishing some longevity too. Yeah. As a gym owner, how many people have you seen that come in, do gear? Or commit for a short period and then disappear. Oh, exactly. all the time. If you can't commit to something and do it and truly commit to it, don't do it. Yeah. Right. And, and you, these guys will come into the gym. They've been in the gym for six months and they decide they want to take it to the next level. And then a year later, they're like, eh, that was just a phase. Yeah. yeah. Like, get through that. You took De all that risk for, for a phase. Let's determine that this is something you want to live with. Absolutely. Yeah, there's tons they of do. people that have the genetics and, and a look that they could be good right now. Mm -hmm. And they haven't even started. Yet, they're, they're not mentally prepared or fit to be able to even live this lifestyle. It's right. not just like... Yeah, you eat this diet and you're going to be good. No, you're going to be suffering. You're going to be 5% body fat and you're going to yeah. feel like you're dying. Yeah. You know, it's a different it's a different type of vibe when you get into it. And some people can't handle that even though they look like they should yeah. be able to, you know. You should, you should try it all and and really run run to the end of that extent before you consider doing anything else because sure. it, it might not even be a passion. It might right. just be something you really liked at first, or you might be a little impressionable and the people around you are all into that exactly. shit. that so You thought you were too, you know, so it just depends, but you're right. I've seen it a million times in the gym. You just gotta keep doing you be smart, be patient. Yeah. And what was the first cool car you bought? <clears throat> uh, bought. Yeah. Uh, a Honda okay, Civic. What was the first, car, what was the first cool car you stole? <laughs> <laughs> oh man that probably was a honda civic too also, yeah. <laughs> hence why i bought yeah, one later yeah. <laughs> yeah but when you get into something you do just you kind of put your feet in the water test the water a little yeah. bit try it see if you like it determine if you want to you know commit to it like you don't date a girl and marry her the next day right right you're going to commit to it for a good period of time before you see if it's going to work absolutely have that same patience you know, these people that jump in, they meet a gal and they go, oh, we're in love. We're going to get married next week. You're, you're an idiot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well this, this, these days, too, like we keep talking about this generation. I hate to rag on these guys because I love all these dudes. Uh, and, and, but <laughs> but um, they fall in love tomorrow. Like literally, they get a girlfriend and then they see, you know, they're on social media like, I love you, baby. And it's just like, damn, didn't. Yeah, we, did you guys just meet the other night yeah. at the bar and shit? Like, nah, bro, we live together already. It's yeah. just like, oh, shit. Wait what about the other month. chick from three weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Wait, wait three months. Yeah, that's how it works, man. That's crazy. So, all right, let's, let's, uh, we're a good hour in. This is an awesome conversation. Mike. It is. Um, so let's, ju let's jump a little bit more into this. Yeah. Um, let's, let's finish off with some of the judging stuff because I just have okay. fun questions I want to ask I you. Got Feel a free to question. answer or not answer. Um, have you seen any real shady shit in, in, in the judging circuits? You know, like I know that people always talk about the propaganda and, and all the stuff that goes on in, in bodybuilding and whatnot. If you can divulge anything, would there I've be seen anything? sketchy stuff that it's like, it just doesn't look right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Like politics type shit that politics, they talk about? Politics, okay. um, the way certain promoters 
make the decision to run their shows. It's uh, bringing, having a, you've got your, um, calling the girls out for the finals or the competitors out for the yeah. finals. And all of a sudden there's a person out there that didn't even go to class. And they bring them out there. And it's like, well, we're going to have all three of them. And there's only two classes. Mm. It's like, well, what's going on here? It's like, maybe he's trying to be inclusive, but this it's never done it before. There's just, yeah. there, there are decisions that are yeah, made. But that's not, they're not even trying to hide that. They're not even trying to <laughs> yeah, hide yeah, it. Yeah, damn. You know, and not every, <clears throat> but not every uh, NPC promoter out there is cool like Tom. Right, right. You know, they're all, even Tom will admit, it's like, he does it, he does it for the, he, he loves it. He does it for, it's, when you, when the show is done right and there's people come in and you don't have disastrous years like you do to the flood and everything. Right, right. You know, it, it it's, but it, it, you can put some coin in your pocket, but for the most part, it's a passion of his. Yeah. And commend yeah. him for doing it. I, he's super dedicated because he's, he's been through some shit. And he's built this shit and he's, yeah. he's done it great. Not all promoters are like that. Right. And then they'll still have people that'll bag on him, other promoters, and say, my show is better and your show sucks. You know, and come on, we all got to get along. Yeah. And, I wasn't going to get into this, and I'm not going to, but there's just a couple promoters out there that I could uh, <laughs> pretty much shit on if I wanted to, but good luck to them. Yeah. Any of them rhyme with Capone? <laughs> That's a fact, Jack. All right. That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> but, you know, even at the national level, you'll see things like uh, women's when women's bodybuilding started going out of... This is not really so much a uh, political thing, but... You would see, when the first when I was test judging for nationals, I'm out there and, and I'm sitting next to a gal who's test judging too, and she'd been around the circuit a bit, and she goes, they called out the women's bodybuilders. They come up, and all of a sudden, all these Japanese men, photographers, roll up to the front of the stage. <laughs> and some type of fetish thing. With yeah, These yeah. Japanese guys, and, these, and they, were, they were huge. <laughs> these women, this was before bodybuilding actually... <laughs> Women's bodybuilding started to fade. These were legit women, Linda Murray style. Yeah. You know, big. And it was just the most awkward thing. It's like, well, okay, I guess they're appealing to a certain demographic. <laughs> but it was kept around. Maybe that's why um, it faded because that fetish went away. I don't know. That's why. <laughs> I was going to say I doubt it. <laughs> but yeah. But even there were times like what? And there was, I noticed it more when the women's classes. Yeah. In particular, bikini. We'd be done with the judging and they're going to do a final call out. And they, this is in the pre in the pre judging. Yeah. John, you asked about the, we're talking about the uh, things that I've seen in the judging oh, yeah. and potential yeah. politics and stuff like that. Well, at the national level, you'll see things that just don't seem right. You know, and I remember the first time I, when I was, when I was test judging, I was sitting up there and the uh, women got complete, the women's bikini were done and they were going to do some confirmation judging and they go what we need to bring these gals back up there and they end up bringing somebody up who obviously didn't belong up there like and never it, actually won a class or anything they did, like that. No, yeah. no, this was for that particular class and this is during the pre-judging they're going to bring them oh, back okay, up okay. Mm -hmm. and to look at them again and i just remember the gal next to me who was a seasoned um i at this she goes this is where the politics come in it's like Ugh. somebody's coaching somebody or somebody knows somebody and the, the head judges or the judges all kind of get together and go, hey, what about this person? It's like, my competitor was number 25. <laughs> so there's some favors getting done. There might done. be some favors yeah. getting done okay. for whatever reasons. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's hard not to think that that happens. Right. Um, I think for the most part, it's pretty much on the up and up. A lot of the, the uh, um, social media helps drive that. There are people that are pre kind of like uh, predestined and people have opinions of them before they get up there sure and then it's confirmed that's why you'll see some people that may not even have the right conditioning up there and they'll beat somebody else and it's like well they got that presence and they know somebody <clears throat> or right, right. they pers were persuaded and then they can always come back well he looked better at pre-judging than he did in the evening so yeah. at the end of the day it's all subjective yes know? it really is yeah and if you aren't able to accept that to be up there and to be judged that way knowing that there are some biases that may come into play right, that, right. that or it may or can, because it's not, you're not going up there and trying to deadlift more than somebody else. Right. That's not, that's not right. it. Or run faster than them or jump higher. There's no proving. It's not quantitative. Yeah. 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 Cr exactly. There you go. So if you, if you're not strong enough mentally to accept that, that you might, things might not go always go your way, even though you think they should don't get up there. Yeah. yeah. Save us all the energy, sure. all the effort. When I did this show in 2015, it was I was kind of on social media a little bit, but pretty rarely. Most of the pictures were me covered up, and somebody made a comment going, 
yep, here's your winner. He's going to win it. And Tom got just a wrath. I was like, oh, why are you having your show? You've already picked your winner. I placed third. Jeez. That was the most unrigged show of all time. Yeah, I was there for that show. <laughs> why, why did they hate me? I placed right where I belonged. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Ahead of Cody. Yes. <laughs> Love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Cody. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I was just thinking earlier, too, with the way this conversation has gone, this, this podcast might beat Cody's as well. Uh-oh. Beach again. <laughs> that's he's he's that's taking a lot of pride in his <laughs> yeah. show right now, being the, the top viewed one so yeah, far. He's going to say, I got to come back and try yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's just because I'm older, Cody. I got more years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> he knows more people. Yeah, yeah. there it is. <laughs> right on, man. <clears throat> um, so, all right, jumping kind of away from that. Obviously, I mean, yeah, in, in any sport, in any industry, we're going to see um, there's always some kind of politics and things going mm-hmm. on. Um, it probably happens more in in on the national level and in the pro circuits than you see on a local level, maybe I think so um, because you know, we're, we're, you're more close to what goes on on the local level. I think, and at least from where I stand, um, I've never had the ability to rig a show and I'm a sponsor, uh, title sponsor for pretty much all the shows yeah. that we do locally. So, um, it's just not as doable. I don't think on this level really. Yeah. And you know, they're, they're not all as, um, capable of, of getting special favor at, right. at this level right. as they are on the you know the upper level. So, I've cool. been in many 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 judges meetings with the promoters and the head judges, and yeah. we're st- in that meeting, and has never come up going. You got to do this. I want this person yeah. to win. Never. Yeah. Now and we I'm, we have um, had some I think some confirmation on a local level for some old promoters that maybe did some shady shit that had come out. Um, yeah, and I don't know how far you're willing to go in on that one, but I'll just say real loosely, it, it, there was a promoter that used to run things around here locally got busted or caught kind of playing some politics and shit in terms of how some of their shows or her shows turned out. Um, I, I've seen and heard a lot about that and from numerous amounts of people. Um, and then shortly after she um, was exiting from even being involved. And so it kind of was still a seal of, of confirmation for me that, yeah, maybe that's truly what went down. I can neither confirm nor deny. Okay. However, I have sat at the judging table when awards were being placed and I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I go, I'm usually spot on. Yeah. Yeah. I did, I did not see that coming. And Fair enough. out of respect for that individual, I, yeah. I really no worries, man. I just I just wanted to point it out because I'm sure most people are aware yeah. and those who who aren't, you know, that's like the extent of what I've ever identified or heard rumors about on a local level or something like that happening. It doesn't happen at a Tom show. I can no, assure you doesn't. of that. Yeah, yeah I would have won way. already. Yeah, yeah, for real. We would have had all kinds of winners out <laughs> yeah. of Metro by now. <laughs> yeah, I not only would have beat Cody that day, I'd have beat everybody yeah, else exactly. in my class. Yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> of all shows, yeah, Mark would have been smacking all the yeah. locals. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> It's always, but it's always subject to, it's someone's opinion. Yeah, for so sure. It, it, it's like figure skating or anything else. Yeah. You know, you're being judged by others' opinions. I had a question just for like competitors. Like what are like the top three um, deciding factors of like a close call? So say you, you got, I'm going to say classic bodybuilders because okay. that's what we have more of nowadays. And I'm talking about at the local level. What is that deciding factor if they're both pretty well similarly conditioned like what what are you looking for to put one over the other like first to second hmm. do you go by poses how like well usually it's when at the local level let's what's the average number of uh, men's physique guys in a class a lot 20 something yeah, yeah 20 yeah. and of those you can pretty much pick the bottom five out right pick those out this is how i judge yeah when i'm judging that I, if there's 20 in a class i immediately identify the five that shouldn't be there yeah now i'm down to 15 and then it's usually pretty easy to pick out just by general shape i can i can i imagine myself if i had really blurry vision i could still pick out the guys with the best symmetry and shape right. just by the how they how the silhouettes they, the silhouettes yeah. they stand there i can pick them out so i can usually then focus on the first five and that's usually pretty easy it's six through 15 that gets that yeah. are a pain in the ass yeah, yeah okay and i'm really only looking for 10 and and if because we only we only basically award five in motion in at most yeah so you're not doing them justice unless you rank basically put your heart into the top ten 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. everyone's going to be a little bit different. Yep. So if you're not in the top 10, good luck next year. Train a little harder. Yeah. Take up Monopoly. Do something different. Become a very <laughs> successful businessman, whatever. Um, but I look, to get back to your question, I look for the size and the shape. Size and shape is muscle. That's the part that took the work to get there. Right. That took the gym time. Then conditioning is next for me. Okay. You know, so if you got two guys that are equally conditioned, you got an equally conditioned, I'm going with the bigger guy. Mm-hmm. And then unless he's got, then I got to take in the intangibles. Does the guy have the, the X frame? Does he have the flow? You know, broad, broad shoulders, narrow waist, flowing quads. Yeah. yeah. And that do, doesn't make any difference whether it's bodybuilding, classic physique or men's physique. I still look, look for it that the, way. The size or symmetry win in your book. <clears throat> Excuse me. If they got that perfect X frame, but the dude next to him, maybe not so much, is just a little bigger. Well, this, the symmetry thing would be left to right, top to bottom, front to back. Yep. So if a guy turns, if they both look the same from the front, and they turn to the side, and the guy's like, you can't see him past the telephone pole, mm. he's out. you got to have that thickness. Yeah. That thickness, to me, shows that dedication in the gym that you've been in there. That's what takes the time to build. Right, right. So whether it's bodybuilding or classic physique or men's physique, I'm still looking for that thickness. Because you have many people out there that you, they come walking at you, and it's like, dude, that fucker's huge. Yeah, yeah. No, he's just got good skeletal structure. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of dudes that look really jacked when their shirt's on, then they take yeah. it off, and they're like yeah. premature muscle. Yep. Yeah. So I'm not, conditioning is very important. If you have two guys that have equal shape and muscle and muscle mass, the, the conditioning's going to get it. In Minnesota, yeah. it used to be conditioning, 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 period. And I had a problem with that. Like, you so you're going to reward the guy that's the most ripped every time and he's got no shape, no flow. Right. That made no sense to me. That's fair. It needs to be just because you're the most conditioned doesn't mean you win. So at the at the upper level they judge all of that and then based on poses and what what poses you win. That's one way to do it. There's no it's not laid out that way. Okay. Like they don't go front double bicep Competitor number 26. That's just kind of how the judge uses their their ability to score if it's something mm-hmm. that they struggle with. Seeing. And no matter what the class, usually classes are one from behind. Yeah. Yep. yep. A guy can look great from the front. You turn around, he's got soft, soggy glutes. Nope. Same thing with gals. And when you watch it, that's why they have the gals walk to the back of the stage and come back. So you can see it. If it's jiggling, deduct. Damn. I like a little jiggle in my Yeah, in, in real life, that's, that's not the I'm not saying that's a, I'm not dogging that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But it's like all of a sudden it goes from being, yeah, she looks really good to, she's got a fat ass. It's like, yeah. well, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, that, is that really the goal here? <laughs> okay, here's at the local level, before when women were first getting rolling with the bikini and the figure and stuff, one of the judges down there, very good friend of mine, I go, dude, how do you judge this? We were all new and he goes, Rank them in the order you want to do them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a uh, criteria right there. Is mm-hmm. her, does her attitude count? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Did she, she got, buy me uh, dinner? Her personality, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> it's not a flexibility contest, but should it be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, fitness, right? That's that's what women's fitness is. Fitness was that. Yeah. that That's changed a lot, too. I mean, it used to be just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the um, physical abilities and the athleticness yeah. that they would bring to it. How do you feel about, like, I, this is off topic a little bit, and I'm sorry, but how do you feel about, like, bodybuilders being able to do backflips and stuff? Like, they should be able to do that on stage, I think. Why not? Fuck it. Why not? Bring it back. They, we don't want them to do it, though, because they hurt themselves. Yeah, yeah but but they, but they could take all the steroids they need to get exactly, to the show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, the fitness people are pretty lean, and they, they're they doing all kinds of stuff, you know? So it's like, but I guess a 270-pound man doing a backflip. If you can backflip at 270, fucking backflip. I mean, do it. Yeah, I want to <laughs> see that. Even Aaron Canner doing yeah. a backflip, dropping into the into splits. Into the splits? Yeah, that's nuts. Go for it. Yeah, that I, guy's like a ninja, though. I don't know if you ever watch him on Instagram. He yeah. does all kinds of crazy kick flips. And in all the kinds summertime of shit. Yeah, when yeah, he's yeah. doing all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. That was, that's a part of it, too. As a judge, if you see that stuff and you're entertained, that's part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you're presenting yeah. yourself, you're, you're selling yourself to the judges. And at the evening show, you've already done your selling as yeah. far as your, your physique has been judged. For sure. And I think maybe they should, re, it would be beneficial to put more points or have it more weighted. 
to include that posing. Yeah. Uh, Juji Mufu. I don't know if Juju. you guys know. Yeah. yeah. I'm old. I'm not dead. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, he was at nationals uh, last year and yeah. he did a, a front flip or a back flip and they didn't even, they didn't ban him. They didn't do anything to reprimand him. They just said he can't do it next time. So he knows. Yeah. But he, let's be real. He knew that going into it. There's he no way. Have. Like, and he, he was just fine, and he got, like, second or third place. I was like, he should have at least been, like, last, 16th. Like, that's oh, what... Well, well a popularity we, contest, then. Well, yeah, oh, I mean... Yeah. Okay, what got him there? Did he, was, it his, was his physique second? It, it was for sure good. He, he was solid, but, I mean, it's the rules. We're going to have rules when I have oh, rules. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, he... He did a backflip. You're not supposed to do a backflip. What's what's going to stop me from doing it then if I can do it? And you're just going to tell me I shouldn't do it next time, you know? Well, sometimes there's there's rules because I think the Federation puts them in, mm-hmm. but not everybody necessarily agrees with them. Yeah. So maybe it's just kind of a, one of those passive rules or it's just like... I guess. It's, hey, guess. don't do that. You're not supposed to. Yeah. Let's bring it back. It's the same how I, I think even at the NPC level, um, bodybuilders trunks aren't supposed to go up their ass cracks. Yeah. But... But they do all they the time. They do. In every show they And they, they, they buy them pulling them up now yeah, even yeah. further to show off glutes. But, uh, but again, no, you don't too often see someone p- call them on that, which I think can go either way, you know. I yeah. can see. I would hear it like this: at the, the uh, weigh-ins, and they're checking their suits, and they go, yeah. "Okay, this is close." And then the, you got to make sure you use a lot of bikini bite and hold it into place. And they show up for the evening show, and the girls got it jacked up, and they don't say anything. Mm-hmm. And then it's usually, "Well, it's just a local show." And their physique, <clears throat> their physique is uh, is the one that's worthy of national. Let, we'll let them deal with it. It's kind of like passing the football player that, yeah. that doesn't get really good grades, but he's an extreme talent on yeah. the field. Yeah. Just pass it on to the next level. Yeah, well, that's not my job thing. It's yeah. not my job. Yeah, yeah. You know, she, they paid their their uh, entry fee. That's what matters. Yeah, yeah. That and it's, sucks, it, but. That's what really does suck is that it's become a. It's become such. It's always been a business. Yeah. But back in the days when they would have. The Olympia in a auditorium or a hotel bu- room, and I don't mean a hotel room, but a hotel uh, Bank- conference banquet, banquet room. Yeah. Yeah. And you see the ceilings super low, and it's well not well lit. <laughs> and Arnold's in there, and um, Lou Ferrigno and Frank Zane, and they're all up on stage, and it's tiny little stage. That's that brings me back to my core. Yeah, it's like man, that's what it was all about. It was the cult sport. Anytime Spurs. you take something that was a cult sport or a cult or a niche and you try to create it for the masses, it becomes so watered down and then it becomes include me. I had one person come up to me and say, well, I was giving him a bad time about being men's physique <laughs> <laughs> and you know who you are. And he said to me, he goes, well, I'm not willing to do what you bodybuilders do. But he, he created separation. He created. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he what? told me who this was. If you and don't I looked know, at him so. and I go, "You don't even know me. Oh, shit. you don't even know. You don't know anything about me, but you're making that assumption. Yeah, it's like, come on. You, what? You're not willing to eat as much as I do, train as hard as I do. <laughs> Is well, that you, it? you can't bench 500 pounds. What's the problem? Yeah, yeah, what, you, yeah. <laughs> what are you not doing that I could do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not willing to do what you bodybuilders do. Oh, okay, interesting. That's like walking up to a millionaire and going, "I'm not willing to." work hard enough to make the money that you make (laughs) because i know you fired some people before yeah Yeah. i'm not gonna do that no that's funny and i don't want to shoot on any mean tweets yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's a whole nother one too man jesus so before we jump too far away um on on just bodybuilding alone man due to the the time and whatnot i want to keep you all night let's talk about some of the other stuff you're into because you're into powerlifting as well yep um, and I know recently you've been dabbling um, with some of the strong men, at least um, I'm judging with judging that. And, and participating and putting on some of the events and stuff with EHOP and whatnot. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like your, your power, you've competed in powerlifting as well. So you've done bodybuilding. Um, and before we go all the way from that, um, you've com- you've bodybuilt. You've been a bodybuilder for how many years? Then like my first show was 89, 89. So and my last show was in 2015. OK. And you've only done 10 shows, you said under 10 shows, under 10 shows. So and two of them were national shows dope and you've so you've spread it out well yeah. but you've you've lived that lifestyle the entire time and then you've now done powerlifting you've competed in a few powerlifting yep. shows correct yep i my first powerlifting show i did was in like 94 as well okay i was i got thrown into it. i actually did a powerlifting contest at the state pen in bismarck oh nice <laughs> and two guys at the, at the sports room at the time going hey you want to do a powerlifting meet this weekend i go this weekend sure <laughs> oh so no prep or nothing no prep yeah, and they yeah. go we got a shirt that'll fit you in a squat suit 
Nice. All right. So we go to the pen and I'm in there 165 pounds. I blew up after my bodybuilding contest. Mm-hmm. It was huge. That's and the I, best. Yeah, 165 pounds. <laughs> Veiny as fuck. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny. Should not be powerlifting. Right. So I'm sitting there and we're at the pen and doing my stuff. You know, I play second or third, whatever. You know, I think a grand total like 1300. Damn. But, and my bench was about 275 or 300 with a shirt. You're way to kick ass. <laughs> but the best part was, is, is the next day, on the front page of the Bismarck Tribune, there was a picture of my picture of me squatting, and I'm down. My I've got the squat face going, and color picture right on the front page. Mark wrote the Bismarck State Penitentiary. Da, 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 da. My grandma gets a phone call. Oh, no. Mark's in the pen, and then she calls my mom. She goes, "Why is Mark in the pen? What did he do? <laughs> I knew he was a bad seed. <laughs> oh, shit. I always had a feeling about it. Oh man! So that was uh, an eye opener." But it was pretty cool. They they ran a really they had a, one of the guards was really into powerlifting and he helped put it on and it was good to mingle with. Them. We have people in prison that we have good people that are in prison. Yeah, oh, I guess sure. that's kind of my point. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the people that I met and well, the, I'm in there lifting and all of a sudden somebody hollers out my name and it's like I, I know somebody in here. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. you just kept walking. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. <laughs> So you never know who you run into, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Don't judge people by their past. Oh, yeah. for sure. But with the, you know, that was a... Wait, say that that last part one more time. Don't judge people yeah. by their past. Hell yeah. Thank you, you know? Um, But I did that, and then I did a couple of other powerlifting meets in the cities, and I wasn't really, wasn't really my thing, but I like to bench. So I, I dabbled in bench contests over the years and pretty much won every one I did. And then I didn't do another one until 2016, 2016, there was one in Fargo, and I was 50. It was after the bodybuilding contest, so I was 50-something. Ended up setting the American record for APF. Damn. Raw record and 446. And <clears throat> and now, June 3rd, I'm doing the APF Nationals in Chicago. I'm going to compete in the 220s and hopefully break knock Ivan out of the record books. Going after the Russian, the old guy. What's the current record? 468. It's crazy. Yeah. So... We'll see. Training's going good. I've had a lot of help with my training over the years. Being yeah. Marshall's been a valuable resource. Marshall Johnson, the yep. freak show. Um, Jason Ellard at EHOP has been great. That whole crew. Yeah. You know, and Kathy Johnson keeps me regular yeah, when I yeah. see her. You know, a lot, there's just it, a lot yeah. of really good people in that. Yeah. And that's what it really. Powerlifting has a really dope community. If there's one yeah. thing I can say about it, like bodybuilding is so competitive, most people don't always click. Yeah. yeah. But in powerlifting, it's just a big community. Even when they compete against each other, they always support each other, have each other's back. It's a really cool thing to see. I can't judge, I, and I can't determine how much you're going to lift. Right. You know, it's you're going to lift what you're going to lift. Right. And I can be supportive of that. That's cool. I, right. you know, I have my own limitations. We all do. Mm-hmm. But you see more people encouraging people at powerlifting meets. Mm-hmm. At strongman meets than you do at um, power at bodybuilding because it's so subjective. It's like, you know, I got fucked. I got third place. Yeah, it's like, no, yeah. you got fucked because you didn't know how to diet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you didn't do enough cardio. In whatever it is, For sure. you know, you didn't come in a condition. But you know, yeah. that's subjective or uh, subjective. And powerlifting strongman, it's subjective. It's you against the weight. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yep. And you do develop that camaraderie. Yeah. Which is really cool. It is. It's a cool thing to see amongst powerlifters for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it, I, I attribute a lot of it to um, nutrition. They're happy eaters versus bodybuilders. They are definitely happy unhappy eaters. eaters. <laughs> At EHOP, we, we've got a, a bourbon bar. Yes. Oh, you yeah. walk in there, it's like, oh, what's your flavor today? <laughs> you know, we got, it's always stocked. We got beer in the fridge. Nice. And it's like the strong man, it's like, okay, it's beers before stones. So those, Slam a couple of beers and start hoisting the stones over that shit. Yeah, Liquor, yeah, yeah the yeah, yeah. boy. It's like you, you want to finish up a workout and get a shot of uh, Kentucky's finest. Yeah, come on over. <laughs> but we've got some really incredible athletes there. Jack Plankers. Yeah, he's uh, he's a monster old man. Huge just monster. Plays second at the Arnold in the World Amateur Championships. He's already got his pro card. Oh wow! He lost by like a point and a half. Damn. And he didn't. His training, admittedly, he goes. He didn't train wholeheartedly for it. And one of the one of the events that he finished second and like missed one rep, he didn't even train for. Yeah, 
Yeah. The guy's got incredible potential. Soon you're going to see him up there with the Brian Shaws yeah, doing yeah. that stuff. He is That's that dope. he is that legit and he trains there. He's a great, great, wonderful person. Um, we got a wealth of knowledge there. We put on two strongman meets a year. We had the uh, Winter Classic in February and we got another one coming up, uh, Strongest on the Prairie in July during the fair, about the fairgrounds. You can get more information on that at Edgar's House of Pain on Facebook. Check that out. And we've also got a powerlifting meet coming up in May, I believe is what it is. Good deal. And that's through the APF. So we're our power, strongman competitions are this through a U.S. strongman. Um, so if you're ever interested in that kind of stuff, I know it's a niche around here, but come and check us out. Um, just you can contact me. Yeah. I can give people information on that. But for anybody involved in training, whatever it may be, if it's CrossFit, um, bodybuilding, powerlifting, men's physique, <laughs> there's something for everybody. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we clown a little bit about what our preferences are, but they're just preferences. Yeah, for sure. You know, so we all got to find our deal. Yeah. I like um, that, man. Yeah. It's, it's, um, having an open mind is the most important yeah. thing, in, especially in this industry that we're in. Um, I see a lot of closed mindedness. Um, I also see a lot of closed mindedness in, in people who don't mean it. And so I think vibe checking people is important. Don't take everything so serious. Don't be so easily offended by people. Yeah. Um, and also I'm all, I can, all, I always admit when I'm wrong, man, if I misjudge somebody and then I later find I actually appreciate that person, I'll always tell them, man, right. man, I used to think you were something different than you are now. And I really appreciate who you are at this point. So, and I think that happens a lot to a lot of people. So, so keep an open mind in any, anything you're getting into, especially when it comes to the gym, we're all in here essentially with the same mindsets. We just don't have the same goals. Right. Yeah. So goals yeah. and experiences. Yeah, for you sure. Know, but make us <clears throat> you, uh, go for it. Do you have three tips? I'm going to go off track a little okay. bit again. Oh, three, three tips for, uh, like a, a new bodybuilder, um, three main things that you could, you, you wish you knew when you started, I guess. Make seems like, a, seems like a pretty common question. Most, uh, it people seems get to be after a while, but I, I'd like, I'm interested. I'm going to kind of rattle off a couple of things and I'm just going to kind of free think this. Yeah. Don't believe everything you read. Yes. Have a critical mind. Okay. Just because in some, because somebody tells you something, don't think it's going to work for is automatically going to work for you. You got to find your own. Be open to trying new things. You know, also seek out advice from people that this is going to be bad. Look like they know what they're talking about. Yeah. If a guy's got a physique that you admire or something you want to be like, ask that person. Mm -hmm. And if you see somebody doing really weird exercises in the gym and they look the same or they haven't changed, they may not be the person you want to reach out to. Yeah. But find somebody. Don't listen to, you get too many cooks in the kitchen, you, the meal's going to be ru ruined. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even if you're seeking out a coach, I don't care who your coach is, give that person the opportunity. Yeah. For an example, the last powerlifting meet I did was in November, and I was training for it. I was training the uh, West Side conjugate method. I was balls deep in it. I'm following it to the letter. Jason was helping me with it. Didn't work for me. It didn't work because I need, if you're not familiar with it, and Marshall, if I don't get it right, Mar I'll hear about it from Marshall, but that's cool. <laughs> you don't really train with the weights that you're going to do the meat day. It's maximal effort with submaximal weight. So you do things, like you. Ne some people never, in the way it's spelled out, you're not going to be pushing, be um, benching the weight that you do the day of the meat until the day of the meat. Yeah. And that's paraphrasing. Yeah. But you're working through it and working through your sticking points and getting there. For me, I have to train more linear. So I have to be, I'm working up to singles. I'm doing that. I have to, I have to have a confidence in me before the meet yeah. that I can get there. Because the last meet, I, my third attempt was 468 and my coach didn't even tell me. It's like, I was going to freak you out. And I got it off my chest. It felt heavy as fuck because it was because I hadn't trained with it. And I grabbed it and my CNS was I'm like, He's yeah. <laughs> and because I just hadn't had it, so um, I learned from that. Going, I need to uh, I need to modify it to have a little more linear in it, and still incorporate some of the conjugate methods. Yeah. But I have to have. I can't be surprised that day. And Marshall, you can come back and school me on that 
all you want. We're he's good. gonna. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna pick me apart. And I deserve he's it. gonna make an edit out of this. And he's post definitely. Is. He's, he's gonna, gonna be put... driving down the road going, <sighs> stupid fuckers. They think they know what they're talking about. And I don't, Marshall. When it comes <laughs> to that, I, I really don't. I hate when guys get on podcasts and think they know what's. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just saying that Car, I, I, I got a taste of it. And my yeah. point was, I followed it to the letter. Yeah. And I didn't have the result I wanted. But I wasn't, and I kind of had a feeling going into it that it would be that, or towards the end that it was going to be that way. Yeah. But I wasn't going to deviate from the process because I wouldn't know if it worked unless I saw it through fruition. And after I took it through the meat, then it's like, okay, I need to make some changes. So to, to turn it back to bodybuilding, if you have a coach and you keep changing it week after week or wanting to change coaches, you don't think you're getting the, uh, um, you're bang for the buck and it's not yeah. working for you. It takes time. You got to have that patience. You got to see it through because you can't judge it. You know, you study for a test a certain way. If you follow that test, that study method, if you, if you test well, great. If you test bad, something was jacked up with how you, t- how you uh, studied for it. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to follow that plan. The old saying, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. Mm-hmm. Yep. but you got to give it the commitment to that plan. So whoever your coach is, if it's Marshall, Jason, if it's a uh, Sweeney, it doesn't matter if, if it's GQ, don't care. Follow that plan. If it doesn't work to you at the end, it didn't get the results that you wanted. Maybe you need to make a change. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But commit to that coach. Yeah. Finish would, to make sure you can blame the plan. Finish. So that would be advice. Number one, yeah. if you're getting advice, follow it through <laughs> advice. Number two, don't believe that you can, uh, all the work in the gym, negates all the diet right and i hate the term diet get the right nutrition in yeah and if i as far as that goes make sure you're getting your protein in after that because most people fail to get the amount of protein in i can't eat that much well then just eat that yeah anything after that doesn't matter until you get down to the training part or the um, the prep part right yeah right and that's an interesting i've never heard anyone give that give that that direction of advice like if you have a hard time eating, eat your fucking protein first. Eat your protein sure. first. Yeah, that's good. And if you're trying to keep your calories down, keep the carbs. Right. If you're going to get some type of a keto or a caveman type diet, throw in your fats. Right. I, um, Susan, the gal that my first coach that I ever yeah. had, she's like, get your protein in. Anything after that off season, just eat whatever the fuck you want because you're not going to be hungry anyway. Right, right. I'm as long as you eat your protein. Get, get, get that <laughs> protein in. Yeah. That's true, though. Because, I mean, worst comes to worst, you're going to use some of that protein as energy, and that's that's what it is, you know? So. Okay. And the last thing that I would recommend, this is for if you stay in the game, because at some point you're going to get old. And I woke up, I didn't wake up one day going, geez, I can't touch my shoulders, or my knees hurt, or I can't bend over and touch the floor. That was a cumulative effect. Yeah, progressive. Keep working on your mobility as you big go. Big one. That's a big one. Okay. John, I want you to take your right arm, touch your shoulder. Look, I can't do it, and it's not my bicep getting in the way. Like this, yeah, I can do that, right? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. that's the music you would think you're smart. It with this one, I have mobility issues with this one. So exactly, yeah, yeah. keep working on that stuff. That's not good. That was really far, though. Yeah, this one's bad. Yeah, yeah. Dion, I've, look, I've look been at showing this. this to Eric before. That's as far as I can go. Mm, that's crazy. That's it. <laughs> and it's not even flex. It's just <laughs> <laughs> the biceps in the way. That's not the bicep. Yeah, it's yeah. just I failed to continue to work on my mobility. Years ago, I'd be talking with Kemper. And he, he goes, you need to stretch more. And I go, I ain't stretching. And I see your your my creed back there with the with the lion. Yeah. And I would go, you never see a lion stretch before he takes down the gazelle. He just rockets out and gets it. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. pull up with a hamstring injury. Hey, we're so badass, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> the, and I didn't realize that about cats until I got a cat. And then I realized they wake up stretching. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. always stretching. Yeah. So it completely blew my theory. <laughs> I like that. I'm like, oh, I don't stretch because that way I got more spring out of the hole. Yeah. <laughs> my my pecs and my everything's so damn tight. That's just tension. It just yeah. wants to bring you back up. <laughs> if only that's yeah. how it works. That's not how it works. <laughs> Work, keep working on your mobility. Whether yes. you stay in the game or not, you'll that'll you'll thank me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And on that note, like I'm 57. In 10 years, when I'm 67, I want to be able to look back and thank my 57-year-old self. Nice, yes. You know, thank you for how, what you did then. Yeah. Instead of the opposite going, I want to kick my 57-year-old ass. He should have known better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that that's uh, the same for any age as you, right, as you grow. Right. Yeah, you got to be able to make sure you're constantly 
de- preparing yourself to look back on the future and say, yeah. hey, thanks. Yeah. Those 23 year olds or the 20 year, the 20 somethings that are just getting into the gym. Yeah. Don't let the decisions you make here. Don't regret them when you're 10 years older. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Should look back at that and have thought it through. Absolutely. In in, in that same breath, have, have you personally um, received any lifting injuries, torn any muscles, anything like that in, in your years of bodybuilding? Two torn rotator cuffs. Oh, wow. And that's because probably my lack of stretching mobility. and warming up and mobility. Sure. I had a torn labrum as well, but that was when I put my Harley in the ditch. Okay. So and the doctor that day said, when I did that, he goes, you're just lucky you're as big as you were. You would have <laughs> fucked things up even worse. <laughs> you, you were your own pads. Yeah. yeah. That was like 255. Yeah. See that now that's why everyone should be huge. <laughs> you still ride, Mark. I still ride, yeah. You still ride, huh? Yeah. Good. Okay. It's, it's it's like a personal life jacket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for you can't float now. in the water. <laughs> That's the one thing. <laughs> we, we don't even want to go down Density. that path. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> yeah, we were down in Mexico in the ocean, and it's like salt water, you're supposed to float. Yeah. Fuck no. Yeah. No. I don't even float now, and I'm not very big, I'm so it, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I get tired. I'm sitting there treading water. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just sitting there having fun. Yeah, I'm good at just sitting there. Yeah. I was down at the lakes last summer and sitting in the water, and all of a sudden I get, what the fuck is that? I get a minnow or something bit my nipple. Oh, damn. It's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, uh, next thing you know, another one bit my other nipple. It's like, I'm like That's some good nipples. thing you had shorts yeah, on. I'm sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I would've... laughs> Oh. Or did you? Uh, yeah. You laughed kind of late there. <laughs> well, they got snapping turtles there, so I definitely didn't want that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but never wear a stringer. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good stuff, man. Well, I, I don't know how much uh, more we can drag this out. I mean, we could probably go all night, man. This is an yeah. awesome conversation with you. you. You've given us a lot of fun topics, man, and, and shared some really cool experiences with us. So I'm uh, super grateful for you contributing to our show with that because it was a really good conversation. Very good. I even say, um, I would even say we'd probably like to have you back on another time and get into some more stuff. That'd be great. You got a wealth of information and knowledge and experience and right in the realms of everything that we want to play with and touch. So I'm all that's about awesome, giving man. back and helping out. Like I do a lot of work helping out kids. and Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. What, what are you doing in, I'm, in I'm, that realms? Well, at EHOP, um, Shanley High School puts on a uh, high school lifting event each spring. Nice. And we help out with that. That's local here to Fargo. Local here. Yep. And I've mentored a few kids that have been getting into weight, weight training and whatnot. One of the guys that I had came to me and he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. In fact, his, his father's, his uncle's a really good friend of mine. So Dan and I, my training partner, started bringing him to the gym with us. And the first day we were with him, it's like, Trying to feel him out. He's 18. It's like, what's your favorite movie? Cars. Oh, shit. That's a good movie, though. Fucking 18 and your favorite movie's Cars. There's not even a tit in Cars. Uh, there's no tit. <laughs> if you dream There's a lot of nice rear ends. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot of bumpers and things like that, but it's like, come on. You know, it's like, it, you're 18 years old and your favorite right. movie's a uh, Pixar film. And okay, that's, that's true. fine. Yeah. So we had a list. It's like, you need to go home and I, or I said, do you know who John Wayne is? I don't know who the fuck John Wayne is. He goes, yeah, do you know who John Wayne yeah, is? Yeah, okay. only from Family Guy, really, though, in oh. all fairness. <laughs> I remember Sam looked at me, he goes, is he a basketball player? I go, go sit by your dish. <laughs> <laughs> so we had him watch John Wayne flicks, um, Clint Eastwood. I go, you're going to watch Gran Torino and learn it. I watched the end of that just the other day for the first time. Pretty, yeah. It's a good movie. It's I need to re, I need to watch it. <laughs> and for the record, in the gym, I am that guy. Get off my fucking bench. <laughs> Get off my lawn. We could go on and on about yeah. gym etiquette because I love it when you go off yeah. on that. But yeah, I would love to do one with you one we day. We'll should. have to come back and do that because <laughs> that's always because Growthy's you're you're one of the guys that I talk about because I know you got a lot of pet peeves and a lot of issues with with certain gym it's etiquette respect. and stuff. It's respect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I get it. That would be a good one, though. Yeah, I, I bet is. we could do a whole other two hours. It's on always that fun when yeah. we talk about gym etiquette because yeah. it's just like we're all different. There's eras so many and varying so opinions, well. yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Well, hey, um, on that note, brother, let's go ahead and close this out. Okay. Uh, again, we really appreciate having you here. Sure. Do you want to share any social media or anything like that? If anyone wants to give you a follow, um, reach out to you, anything Facebook, like that? Uh, Jurassic Mark 3.0, I think is pretty much it. You can find okay. me on Instagram, too, but I'm, I'm not a real. Social you're not a yeah, guy. you're not a social media guy, but I, if, I read a lot of it and follow it, and I sure. get my mind twisted about you know go Q on no yeah, yeah, yeah. kidding, you know? <laughs> <laughs> speak flat earth, you know. <laughs> hey, we'll do another one on that stuff too one day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I with just you. like anything else that stuff interests me, yeah, whether or not sure. it's true or not. Right. It's like 
hey, it's, there's some definite intrigue and some pretty good yeah. evidence. Yep. Yeah. There's intrigue. And it's like you get you got to be open minded about everything. Yeah, absolutely. Get both sides. Yeah. Of everything. Yeah. yeah. Especially now. I agree. That's why the show's called something about everything, man. Because <laughs> we want to touch all those topics, you know, something <laughs> about everything here at uh, Modcast. So, yeah. Um, cool, man. Well, I appreciate right. you sharing with us, Mark. We really appreciate having you on, brother. Thank you, you, guys. You're a very well experienced and, and tenured guy in, in life in general. So it was awesome to pick your brain and, and get some good laughs out, too. Uh, Dion, again, appreciate you always being here as our uh, co-host and our guest. Yes. Sorry about the camera issues, guys. We may never fix them because it's just kind of the vibe that we do here now. <laughs> so, um, again, thank you, everybody, for watching. We appreciate it. If you liked what you've seen here, please share, like, comment, subscribe. Um, even if you don't like it, talk shit, share it with your friends, tell them what a bunch of idiots we are and about the old geezer that doesn't know what he's talking about that we had on the show. <laughs> and it'll make us all happy either which way. So appreciate you guys. Thanks again. We'll check thank you out you. next time. Copy.